Good afternoon uh, again, my friends. Uh, Shalom, I'm David Mensah, Israeli government spokesman. A quick update from me and then to your questions in the usual way. Please put them in the chat, at the uh, in the Zoom, and we will answer all of them this Wednesday, the 28th of August, day 327 of the October 7th war. To start with sad news of another fallen soldier, uh, unfortunately, IDF casualties since the start of the war have risen to 703. First Sergeant Amit Friedman was 19 years old and from Or Yehuda. He fell in battle in the south of Gaza. He will be laid to rest today uh, at 4 p.m., which is in about half an hour's time. There are no words of mine that can assuage the pain of his parents and his family. We embrace them and those dear families who have lost their precious heroes, sons and daughters, in this war for our very existence. This war has exacted a heavy toll on all of us, but none more so than the families of our soldiers and especially our fallen soldiers. But as the Prime Minister has said, I promise you, with unity, determination and faith in the justice of our cause, we will fight and with God's help, we will win. May the memories of our fallen soldiers be a blessing forever. Next, an update on yesterday's IDF operation in the Hamas terror tunnels in the south of Gaza, where our brave commandos rescued our hostage, the Israeli Bedouin Muslim Farhan Qadi from the Bedouin town of Rahat in southern Israel. The Prime Minister again confirmed that Israel is committed and will do everything in its power to bring home all 108 remaining hostages. We are working relentlessly, said the Prime Minister, to get all of them home through negotiations and rescue attempts. The two of these together require our military presence on the ground and constant military pressure. Securing Qadi's release shows that this is not a struggle between religions, but of Hamas terrorism versus the values of decency. Next, let me share with you the latest in Judea and Samaria, the West Bank, we were taken by surprise on October 7th by the Hamas invasion of our country. We will not be surprised again. Israel is operating decisively to ensure that the reality that existed prior to the murderous and horrific attack by the Hamas terrorists on October 7th will never repeat itself. Our policy is clear. There will be no safe place, no places of sanctuary, and no places where terrorists can feel safe, where they feel they are in control. As such, a targeted operation is taking place to thwart terrorist activity in Samaria. The IDF and our security forces are operating in Tulkarim, Jenin, and other places from which murderous attacks have been launched. We will fight to eliminate terrorism wherever it emerges. We know Iran is working to make this another front from which to attack Israel. Israel is on high alert. Our security forces are deployed extensively to thwart another terror attack. And we will settle accounts with any terrorists responsible for terror attacks against our people. Now an update from COGAT and their work coordinating aid into Gaza. Let me share with you the latest as of an hour ago. The polio vaccination campaign, together with the World Health Organization and UNICEF, but not of course with UNRWA, who are a front for Hamas, is taking place. All calling equipment has been transferred into Gaza. 25,100 vials of the, spe of the specialized polio vaccine have been brought in for 1,255,000 people. Now, in terms of plans for the rollout of the vaccination campaign, flyers explaining the vaccination process by, by UNICEF have been transferred to Gaza. Hygiene equipment and further logistical, logistical equipment uh, to be facilitated are being transferred into Gaza as well. 
Two refrigerated trucks will be facilitated into Gaza to reinforce the logistics system along with first aid kits. The vaccination campaign in Gaza will be conducted by the WHO and UNICEF in coordination with the IDF through COGAT as part of the routine humanitarian pauses that will allow Gazans to reach medical centers where the vaccinations will be given. Israel is committed to ensuring a successful vaccination campaign for the civilian population of Gaza. Now, further info on the more than 921,000 tons of aid uh, which has gone into Gaza uh, is comprehensively available on the COGAT updated website. So that's the end of our briefing uh, today. I will now take your questions. Please put them in the chat together with your news outlet and they'll be happy to take them. Uh, thank you very much. Um, let me take this first question from uh, Robbie Cory Boulet from Agence France Presse, AFP. How long is the operation launched overnight uh, in the West Bank expected to last, and what are its objectives? Are there any evacuation orders associated with the operation? And uh, also you've asked, can you confirm that soldier Shaked Dahan's... Okay, I'll deal with that uh, afterwards, uh, Robbie. Uh, let me deal with your first question, which was about the operation launched uh, overnight uh, in the West Bank. Um, I'll be happy to share with you uh, those details. You can always get more details from the IDF uh, um, telegram feed, but let me share with you um, what we can say right now. Overnight, uh, the IDF, our IDF forces began this counter-terrorism operation in Jenin and Tulkaram. We are targeting armed terrorists uh, from the air and the ground dismantling explosives planted under the road and confiscate, confiscating large quantities of weapons. Now, in Janine, three armed terrorists who posed a threat to our forces were eliminated in an aerial strike. In Janine and Tulkaram, our forces eliminated two more armed terrorists. We apprehended wanted suspects. We located and confiscated weapons, M16s, ammunition, and additional, additional military equipment. We exposed and dismantled explosives planted under the road to be detonated in attacks against our securities, our security forces operating in the area. Now, you'll be aware that these uh, modus operandi of uh, putting explosives, IEDs, under the road are straight from the Iranian playbook deployed against coalition forces in Iraq and, if, and in Afghanistan. In Farah, in the Jordan Valley, our aerial counterterrorism op struck and eliminated four armed terrorists that posed a threat to our forces. And again, we confiscated weapons. We exposed and dismantled explosives that were again planted under roads in the area. We were taken by surprise on October the 7th, but we will not be surprised again. We will ensure that the reality that existed prior to the murderous invasion by Hamas on October the 7th will never repeat itself again. Whether from Gaza, from Judea and Samaria, or from Lebanon and Hezbollah, our policy is clear. There will be no safe places, no places of sanctuary for terrorists. This targeted operation in Jenin and Tal Karam and elsewhere in Samaria will thwart the next terrorist invasion of our towns, villages, and cities. It is precisely from these places in Tulkaram and other places that murderous attacks have been launched, but be in no doubt, Iran and their proxies in Judea and Samaria will face the IDF and they will be eliminated. We know Iran is working to make this another front with which to attack Israel, but Israel is on high alert. Our security forces are deployed extensively to thwart further terror attacks. We will settle accounts with any terrorists responsible for terror attacks against Israelis. Uh, thank you for that. Next question from you, Robbie, at AFP is, can you confirm that soldier Shaked Dahan's remains have been retrieved uh, from Gaza, as the uh, Migdal HaEmek municipality has said today. Uh, thank you for that question, Robbie. I haven't got any update on that, and we will be 
uh, releasing, uh, if there are, is some news, we're releasing that officially um, uh, shortly, I imagine. Uh, next question here is from uh, David Clement at the News Forum. The Security Council is scheduled to vote today on a resolution that would extend the UN peacekeeping force in southern Lebanon. Does the PMO have a comment on that vote? Um, thank you for that question, uh, David. Uh, let me share with you our view on the north and also on that, uh, on that peacekeeping uh, force. So that UNIFIL force has been, uh, to be blunt, uh, a big disappointment. Uh, it was deployed uh, specifically to enforce uh, UN resolutions uh, 1701 and 1559 to push Hama uh, Hezbollah behind the Litani River. Uh, they have failed in that mission. Uh, unfortunately, uh, it is unfortunately left to us to use all means necessary to restore security on our northern border and to safely return our citizens to their homes. Israel will continue to respond uh, with force to the unprovoked aggressions of Hezbollah. Uh, UNIFIL have had no effect on that, unfortunately. Uh, they've been doing this since the 8th of October. Hezbollah have, have been attacking us unprovoked. They've launched thousands of rockets and UAVs from Lebanese territory, 8,000 of them. We've had uh, 40, more than almost 50 people killed, uh, hundreds of people injured, uh, 180 square, uh, 180 million square meters of land burnt by this Hezbollah fire. The state of Lebanon and, Hez and the Hezbollah terror organization, which operates at the guidance of Iran, they are, of course, responsible for this escalation of the security situation in our north, and it's, in, of course, in violation of international law and the UN Security Council Resolutions 1559 and 1701. Okay, next question here is from Joel Pollock at Breitbart News. Has Israel received any response from the United Nations uh, about yesterday's, uh, sorry, has Israel received any response from the United States uh, about yesterday's hostage uh, rescue? Uh, thank you uh, for that question, uh, Joel. Um, uh, I, me personally, I haven't seen a response, but that doesn't mean that one uh, ha hasn't been forthcoming, so I'd have to come back to you on, uh, on that answer. Uh, if I may, I'll come back to you straight after this and I'll check the details and then I'll uh, re reply back to you shortly. But of course, uh, the State Department would normally be, and the President uh, or the Vice President and Secretary Blinken uh, would probably um, have said uh, something on that. But I'll check on that, if I may, and come straight back to you after this uh, briefing. Uh, next question here is from uh, Celia Vastal from TV2 Norway. Uh, Foreign Minister Israel Katz is calling the operation in the West Bank a war in every sense. He also points out that Iran is trying to establish a front uh, in the West Bank, Judea and Samaria. Can you elaborate on what the goals of these raids are? And is it correct to call it a war? And if so, who is it uh, against? Uh, thank you for that question, uh, Celia. Uh, I did provide a comprehensive answer to uh, another question from AFP, from Robbie at AFP, regarding uh, our action uh, in um, uh, Judea and Samaria to protect ourselves. Uh, so um, that's uh, the best answer which we've got right now. Are there any other questions? No? Okay, that was the last question today. Thank you uh, for joining us. We'll have another briefing this time uh, tomorrow. Uh, but in the meantime, uh, please do stay safe and uh, goodbye. <laughs>